So as we finished discussing uh, base saturation and the fertility of soils last time, we then introduced um, a component of the soils we hadn't talked about, which were the anions, and so we highlighted um, various anions that you can see, um, and also the idea that some are more soluble than others. Um, so we talked about just there in that last bit how uh, phosphate is relatively insoluble and um, will have an effect on this question, how do nutrients move towards roots, whereas nitrate is, is highly soluble uh, and will have a different uh, out, uh, way of moving, or primary way of moving towards roots uh, in solution. Uh, one sort of um, uh, application that we can take from the uh, looking at anions, um, sort of an application, I, whoops, let's see here. Uh, question similar to our acid um, precipitation question would be if a farmer were to um, fertilize his um, fields with a high nitrate um, fertilizer, um, how would that, uh, and then there's a sudden um, storm, how would that affect the nitrate concentrations in the soils of his fields? Uh, versus outside of the, the fields, given that nitrate is a soluble anion uh, and does not bind, as an anion, does not bind to soil colloids. So that's a discussion that we could have as well, uh, kind of a, a different um, approach to looking at nutrients in soils and um, versus acidic dis deposition. All right, so the next question we see here is how do nutrients move toward the roots? And that does have a lot to do with the solubility of, um, of, an, of a nutrient. So in the data that we're looking at here, we're looking at a corn crop and all the various um, uh, uh, elements or uh, nutrients, basic elements that were measured as the quantity that's absorbed by the plant. And so you can see a lot higher quantities here in this group on down to sulfur. And so this happens to coincide with the, the concentrations of these um, nutrients in the plant, uh, which tells us that these are considered macronutrients, meaning that they are uh, present in higher concentrations in the plant, um, something on the order of um, 10 millimoles per uh, kilogram dry weight. Um, I may have to correct those units, uh, whereas le or above, whereas um, Concentrations less than that amount would be, for these nutrients, would be classify them as micronutrients. And that's an N there. Um, and macronutrients and micronutrients are how we uh, classify essential nutrients. And essential nutrients are nutrients that are um, required for survival and growth and reproduction and metabolism. Um, whoops, essential nutrients is what I meant to write. Okay. So such that without these, one of these nutrients, there would be detrimental effects in, in deficiency symptoms and um, negative impact on growth and yield and so forth. All right, so as we were mentioning, the, these um, nutrients um, move through the soil and arrive at the root by a couple of different means or, or make contact with the root by, in a couple of different means um, for, then, for then the roots to take up those nutrients. And the first here we see is called root interception. And you can see by the numbers that these are, this is a very low uh, uh, you know, reliability in terms of the type of movement or uh, way that the uh, uh, root will access the nutrient. We can see it's a little bit higher here for calcium, um, but that may be because of uh, uh, the fact that calcium is easily weathered from certain crop, uh, certain bed bedrock materials and certain soils. Um, but you can see that it's certainly not as high as its supply through this means here, which is mass flow. So mass flow is essentially um, bulk flow. So uh, the first we mentioned was root interception, just to back up here. The second, which is a relatively low uh, form of uh, nutrient availability, made nutrients made available to roots. The next was mass flow, and mass flow 
is essentially bulk flow, uh, meaning that it, it, it contains uh, water containing nutrients that are um, dissolved in the water and as the water moves down its own potential gradient, uh, water potential gradient, it moves towards the roots, those nutrients are then able to um, be taken up by the plant. And so the, the requirement here is that the nutrient has to be soluble in water. Um, and so you can see that's a, a large number, um, a large um, type of supply here, a significant supply to the roots is by mass flow. Um, now, if we look at the third type or method that um, nutrients move towards the root, that is by diffusion, and that's diffusion, whoops, D-I-F-F, -F, um, that's diffusion of the element itself, not diffusion of water. So you can see that um, here we have a little bit of nitrogen. We have um, phosphorus in the form of, in this case, we're kind of demonstrating in the form of phosphate. And here we have potassium ions. And so NPK is sort of our, you know, larger quantities of nutrients that are needed by the plant. Um, and phosphorus is relatively insoluble, as we said before. So diffusion is its main method of movement. Um, nitrogen that is moving by mass flow is most likely nitrate, whereas this is most likely nitrogen in the form of ammonium, and ammonium uh, would be more likely to diffuse to plant, towards the plant roots than to flow in by mass flow. And then potassium you see here too. Um, so the solubility of the nutrient has an effect on the way that the nutrient moves towards the roots, either by mainly mass flow or versus diffusion. One other uh, aspect of the high calcium number here that we see um, is reflected in the idea that calcium is um, a relatively immobile nutrient within the plant uh, because it's found highly uh, concentrated and it's a component, a major component in cell walls and in maintaining the integrity of cell membranes. And so it doesn't move around the plant very easily. So when litter gets deposited, it gets leached out of the plant, the litter, and right where it's released, it gets taken up pretty quickly by those nearby roots rather than you know, diffusing away from the, the roots themselves. So that may be another explanation as to why this, is, this number is relatively high. All right, so let's look at how uh, in the next question, how do plants influence the transport of nutrients? Influence the transport of nutrients toward the roots. Well, there's um, several, a couple of ways that we will emphasize here. One is by the development of what's called the rhizosphere. And the rhizosphere is basically the soil community surrounding the, the root. Community um, around the root. And so the root basically supports a community of bacteria and fungi around the root um, by secreting or uh, exuding, secreting what are called root exudates, EX. And root exudates uh, consist of simple sugars and amino acids, basically um, things that su uh, supply uh, food and energy and carbon for um, the, the surrounding uh, community. Um, and so it supports um, that soil community of, um, let's say, that community of bacteria and fungi and other components of the soil food web that would be feeding on these kinds of organisms to encourage um, activity around the root, such as decomposition and mineralization which we already talked about, was a major form of supply or resupply of nutrients um, to the soil. 
Um, and so this provides nutrients for the plant right nearby the root. So here we go. Okay, so that's one important way is, to de is the development of a rhizosphere. Uh, another method or, or a strategy is to develop or support symbiotic, mutualistic relationships. So symbiotic, mutualistic relationships. Okay, so we have a couple types that we're going to talk about. Um, a symbiosis or a mutualistic symbiosis is one where there are two partners, uh, two different kinds of organisms that are in partnership where they each, it's a win-win situation, they each supply something that the other needs. All right, so the first one that we'll talk about is shown here in the, in the diagram, which are nitrogen-fixing bacteria. And in this case, we have these, um, yeah, I'll draw over here, root nodules. And the root nodules are grown by the plant, but they house the bacteria um, these nitrogen fixing bacteria such as uh, rhizobium uh, which are found in legumes or frankia it's called in alder and some others but those are the main ones that are discussed usually um, those are the kinds of bacteria, rhizobium and frankia, specific to certain plants. And the nodules house these organisms, these bacteria, um, providing an, an oxygen-free environment um, um, place or environment for the enzyme that they use to fix uh, atmospheric nitrogen, which is called nitrogenase. Nitrogenase. Okay, so basically these organisms fix atmospheric nitrogen into ammonium, and it's right there happening in the root, so ammonium is then directly supplied to the plant by way of these nodules. What, is the, what do the bacteria gain from the relationship? Basically they gain carbon um, from products of photosynthesis. The other type of symbiosis that we could discuss are uh, mycorrhizae. And we've, we've mentioned them before. And mycorrhiza or mycorrhizae means fungus plus root. So in this case, we have um, uh, a fungus, as you can see down below, that penetrates the root surface and then uh, penetrates the cortex uh, region of the root um, so that it um, can gain carbon from the plant, but it also can supply nutrients to the plant because it extends these various hyphae out into the soil, um, which is act similar to a root hairs. They just uh, simply take up nutrients. But there are some other advantages that we'll see here as well. Um, basically, mycorrhizae are present in about um, 85% of the plant kingdom and they are thought to have facilitated colonization onto land. Facilitated land colonization. Okay. Um, the advantages that we could um, highlight here to associating with the mycorrhiza include um, increasing access to soil nutrients. To soil nutrients by increasing the surface area of absorption, um, by having such small diameter hyphae, um, which are the thread like branching um, structures of, of mycorrhizae, having such small diameters that they can uh, penetrate sm even smaller capillary pores than a root hair, um, and they basically, again, as we said before, increase the volume of um, soil that they access. Okay, so lots of reasons there. Secondly, they have access, or they bring, give access to relatively immobile nutrients, such as phosphate. Um, there are huge advantages that um, plants gain by being mycorrhizal in terms of accessing phosphate.